Liam, we've seen, of course, the market reaction to the mini budget. Was that just the catalyst? Were there all these underlying issues, the quantitative easing, the interest rates being low for so long? I think that's exactly right. I don't think the mini budget was the underlying cause of the pound falling. Indeed, the pound's back now against the dollar where it was before Kwasi Kwarteng's statement last Friday. I don't think the mini budget was the reason bond markets spasmed with those market borrowing costs going up, those extra borrowing costs rippling across the economy to, to mortgages and personal loans, you know, really putting the frighteners on everyone. What, it was the spark, I think, Emily, as you say, because it was a very, it was a, a mini budget that became very, very politicised. I think the government was tin eared. It, it was ill timed to, to remove the cap on bankers' mm. bonuses mm. and give a tax break to the top one and a half mm. percent of the income pile at a time like this, when, as Neil rightly said, we're facing a very tough winter across many millions of households. The reason the bonds market spasmed and the reason that interest rates are going to go up a lot in the coming months and years, I'm afraid, is because we're weaning ourselves, as Jasmine said, off the emergency measures, the ultra-low interest rates, the massive amounts of quantitative easing. You know, we have to call it quantitative easing. It's, it's, it's money creation mm. above and beyond yeah. what is justifiable to keep the economy going. Those emergency measures after 2009-10, they became a lifestyle choice mm -hmm. because they made lots of already wealthy people even wealthier, mm -hmm. blowing huge bubbles across asset prices, bonds, stocks, properties, why your kids can't buy a house. Mm -hmm. And it also, that quantitative easing and ultra-low rates meant governments could borrow very, very cheaply. That's why these excessive measures have hung around for so long. Yeah. Now the bubbles have got so big, interest rates are deeply in negative territory when accounting for inflation. That COVID-era QE, that's been injected directly into the economy. That's why a big reason inflation is so high. Mm -hmm. And we now need to adjust away from that and wean ourselves off those mm -hmm. emergency measures. Liam, That's what we're seeing Liam, can now. I, we're can, seeing the beginning ask, of Liam, that. It's nothing to do with this mini budget. Neil, you like to look Liam, at the I, big I, picture when I, it comes uh, to I, moments like this. Do you think there's going to be some kind of reset in our standards of living as a result of these changes? You know, we've seen the leap in interest rates that we're probably going to face. I was, I was wanting to, to, to ask Liam, actually. I've said on here before that uh, I think it's time to think the unthinkable. I, I think the debt that's, that's been created by bankers, it, quadrillions of debt, will simply never be paid. And I, I, I wondered, Liam, are we simply at the end of the line? You know, when I say think the unthinkable, have we reached the end of, of that model of just printing money? Uh, whenever it's desired, is it is it time to think about something else? You know, I, I queued up sovereign money, for example. Well, your your excellent monologue, Neil, and you've got a fantastic way with words. I mean, you you know, I think that, but so many of our viewers and listeners think that too. But what your monologue described at the beginning, it is the rather alarming system that nerdy economists like me called. Are you re ready for it? Fractional fiduciary reserve banking. What does that mean? It means that for every <laughs> pound a bank really owns, it can lend out about 10. So the reserve okay. asset ratio is 10%. That's how they create money. They do literally have a license to create money. But they don't, and, and you need that credit creation rather than exchanging stones or sticks or gold to grow the economy. That is the lubrication that oils the modern economy and, and has indeed led to huge scientific commercial progress and that's how we've we've our living standards have improved but when the banking system over exit when those reserve asset ratios are loosened by politicians who then get nice cushy jobs in banks mm. that they don't understand when they retire when the banking system itself and in particular the central banks get politically captured and the politicians always looking at the short term Mm. egg those mm. central banks on to create even more money from the centre, then the whole system, the fiduciary aspect of it, the trust system, that this little bit of paper really means something just because mm. it's got the mm. Queen or now the King's head on, that trust is broken. That's when you get inflation and that's what we're seeing now.